Acing exams and perfecting your report card is simply not enough to stand out as an engineering student, because whether you're studying mechanical, electrical, civil, aerospace, or chemical engineering, the truth is that engineering recruiters aren't looking for someone whose best ability is to answer a bunch of questions on a freaking piece of paper. What they're actually looking for is someone who has maximized their opportunity to learn in engineering university. Someone who can solve the deadly worldwide problems and thereby change the trajectory of humankind itself. That's someone that they're looking for is someone amongst the top 1% of engineering students. Now if that's not you, I recommend that you listen very, very carefully. The first trait is gratitude. Appreciation for the opportunity to study engineering in university. Now you might be thinking, oh there's no reason to be grateful for engineering school. Everyone else has this opportunity. But think again while I tell you the story of the greatest engineer of all time and how he almost never had the opportunity to study engineering. Yes, I'm talking about Nikola Tesla, the inventor of the polyphase AC electrical system that this entire world still uses today. So it was in Tesla's late teens during the 1860s that Nikola Tesla developed a really strong passion for physics, electricity in general, and uh, induction coils and all of this kind of stuff, right? However, his parents, despite the fact that Nikola Tesla was really drawn to engineering, didn't support that uh, career path for Tesla. Especially Tesla's father, Militon, who wanted Tesla to follow his footsteps in priesthood. Tesla tried and tried so hard to get his parents on board of uh, Tesla going into engineering school, but he couldn't. He just couldn't, no matter how hard he tried. So he quote unquote, resigned myself to the inevitable with an aching heart. However, one day, Nikola Tesla caught a disease, a very terrible disease called the cholera disease. This was when he was 18 years old. And in one, one particular day, it got so bad that he was expected to die. His condition deteriorated, developing quote unquote, into dropsy, pulmonary trouble, and all sorts of diseases until finally my coffin was ordered. Yes, he was literally expecting to die. And then on one particular day at his absolute lowest point in his life where he was literally like, I said he was near death before, but at this point he was literally at the verge of death. At this particular day, his father saw him in this terrible condition and his father rushed to his side and encouraged him to rally his strength. Looking up at his father's pallid and anxious face, Tesla said, perhaps I may get well if you let me study engineering. And then his father Militon said the exact words that Tesla wanted to hear at that moment. You will go to the best technical institution in the world, his father solemnly promised. Tesla said, I knew that he meant it. A heavy weight was lifted from my mind. On the strength of his promise, along with a little help from an herbal cure, Tesla came back to life. That's how much engineering meant to this man. This man, this greatest engineer of all time. That's how much engineering meant to him. And he was super grateful. He had so much gratitude, like this trait that I'm talking about right now. He had so much gratitude to study engineering. So much gratitude that he in fact came back to fucking life. So do you not agree now that you should probably appreciate this opportunity that you have to, to have the capital to spend thousands of dollars in university so that you could enroll into some courses, meet other engineering students and meet engineering professors. You have received a God given gift that others around the world would beg for, do anything for. Not just people who uh, don't have the support from their parents like Nikola Tesla here, but there's also people who don't have enough uh, money to enroll into university. Or maybe they can't travel internationally or maybe they not, they're not smart enough or something. There are so many people out there who don't have this opportunity that you do. And you're here sitting in university complaining about your assignments, complaining about how much exams you have every exam season, complaining about how much labs you have every week. Be grateful for that instead of complaining about it like a little, like a little boy. Because many people around the world would give everything to be in your shoes right now. To end this off, let me ask you a question. Who do you think is going to succeed more in university? Student A? The guy that complains about all the assignments, complains about all the courses, complains about all the exams, even though this is what he signed up for. Or student B, who appreciates the challenge, who appreciates the, quite frankly, depressing exam seasons, but also character building exam seasons. Give it a thought. Trait two, initiative. 
Now that you appreciate the opportunity to study engineering, you have to build on the opportunity that you have to study engineering. Now, what I mean by this is doing more than the bare minimum of uh, attending your lectures, attending your labs, and even acing your exams, because all of that is simply not enough to stand out. Because all of the hundreds of other engineering students around you, they're taking the same courses. So why would any engineering recruiter find you attractive of a candidate? Now you might be thinking, how? How can I develop this skill of initiative? Is it through design clubs? Not really. It does show more than doing the bare minimum if you join a design club, but it doesn't really show initiative because you're taking orders from the design club leader. Although it could be useful, it doesn't show an insane amount of initiative. Could it be acing exams that shows your initiative? No, not really, because you're taking orders from a professor. But the way that you show your initiative, one of the only ways is through personal projects. Projects where you tell yourself what to do. Projects that are self-driven, self-motivated, reliant on nobody else but yourself. Now you can use many different skills to make projects. You can make projects based on Gantt charts. You can make projects based on Arduino, Raspberry Pi, MATLAB, Python, C++, FEA, CAD, 3D printing, anything. I mean anything. But the skills that you're gonna wanna use has to align with the position that you wanna go into in the engineering industry. Like me, myself, I wanna be a mechanical design engineer when I graduate. So the projects that I made had me using skills like prototyping. Uh, like mechanical design work. Now when coupling to this, you also have to make the projects themselves similar to the projects uh, being made in your desired industry. So me and myself, I wanted to go into the heavy machinery industry. So I made shit like gearboxes, I made shit like uh, engine models and even intricate mechanisms. As I said, you, no matter what type of industry you wanna get into or whatever type of role you wanna fulfill after you graduate university, you can make projects. Click the top link in the description if you don't know how to start because I have a program where I get on calls with the students inside of my program and I answer questions and I mentor them. There's also a course and a community with other like-minded engineering students that are watching this type of fucking content that you could even collaborate with and make projects with. Like maybe you could have somebody else across the world 3D print your model that you designed in SOLIDWORKS, or you could uh, make a code for somebody that has an Arduino kit around the fucking globe. Go check out this program if you really wanna level up your career development in university. Trait three, analytical thinking. This is where you're gonna develop your skills, your technical skills, okay? Because we, we already started making projects, but we can't just make shitty projects, right? We can't just make uh, these boring projects that don't even work, right? We have to implement the theoretical knowledge that we're learning from our classes. That's where it truly gets powerful. Like for example, I, I said that I made mechanisms uh, for my initial projects, then I got up to making models of machinery. And then shit got complicated when I started implementing gear concepts. I started implementing fluid mechanics concepts, like the angle of attack on this propeller right here. And I even got to the point where I was implementing stress principles, trying to find the right orientation of this shaft, how to print it, the right diameter of the shaft so it wouldn't fucking snap like it did the first two times. Roll the fucking clip. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of broke the shaft. So the main message of this trait is that projects are great. Yeah, making mechanisms, making models of machinery, they're all great, but they got to get complicated because projects themselves is also not enough to um, be attractive to engineering recruiters. What is attractive to engineering recruiters is complicated projects. There's a difference between complicated projects and simple projects. So once you pass that beginner phase of making projects, then you want to get into the complicated phase of making projects. And if you, once again, need more help on that and you need more guidance and mentorship, then once again, click the link in the description. These are the exact questions that I answer inside of there. So action step, make complicated projects, not just simple projects. Trait number four, vision. Because once you have developed the skills, the technical skills, as I said in trait three, you gotta direct these skills to the right outcome. What outcome do you want to have from this type of technical skill development that you achieved from your projects? Do you wanna be first in your capstone project? 
Do you want to intern at freaking NASA or something? Do you want to later in your career make a world changing invention? Think big with this shit. Have a big vision and eliminate the word impossible from your dictionary. Nobody has the right to tell you what's possible and what's not possible. The reason that I made those projects was to land an internship. I had no industrial experience and I had no experience to get that industrial internship. So I developed my own experience on my own through these projects. That was my reason for developing these technical skills. Now, although I had these projects, I also lacked a bunch of other things like design club experience. I know, crazy, right? I lacked research experience with professors. I didn't have any connections to the engineering industry. And I also didn't join the co-op program at my university. And I told this to one of my friends who was also looking for internships. My One of my friends, I'll tell you why in a second, but he said that, it's going to be impossible for me to find an internship. He said that it was impossible for me to find an internship given where I was at. Quote unquote, he said, you're cooked. Despite his quite hurtful words, I eliminated the word impossible from my vocabulary like I told you literally 30 seconds ago. And because I eliminated the word impossible, I kept on going. I didn't listen to him like, oh, it's impossible. I'll stop trying looking for an internship. No, I kept looking for an internship. I kept applying. And literally two days later from when he said those words, I got a call back. A call back during one of the middle of my YouTube videos that I was recording. Roll the fucking clip. Like so. Gosh, I'm getting a call. So I'm just recording this. <laughs> I was just recording this video for uh, this mechanism, right? Oh my gosh, bro. I just got an interview. It's got an interview, bro. Yes, I had a separate YouTube channel at the time which displayed all of my engineering projects that I mentioned before. And I'm really, I'm really freaking happy that I caught that moment on camera. It's crazy that I got the call uh, uh, during one of the recordings. But anyways, one week after that call, after that phone call, that interrupted my video recording. I landed the fucking internship. I landed the internship, despite the fact that I had my friend telling me that it was impossible. Fuck that guy, honestly. Fuck anyone who tells you that your dreams are impossible as an engineering student. Fuck anyone that says that you can't invent this impossible thing. Fuck anyone that says that you can't land an internship. Fuck anyone that says that you can't work at NASA, Tesla, or fucking John Deere, or any other big company out there. The Wright brothers were told that they would never engineer a flying machine, yet they still invented the airplane that takes us around the world today. Werner von Braun was told that it would never be possible for an, a rocket ship to reach outer space, yet he's still fucking engineered into reality. Nikola Tesla was told by his literal professor that he would never be able to make an AC motor, yet he still did it within 10 years from that point that he was told that it was impossible. Fuck it, why not? I'll tell you the story. Yes, one specific lecture when Nikola Tesla was still in university, he attended uh, this one professor, Dr. Pushel's demonstration for a DC generator. It looked, up, it looked a little something like this. Okay, yeah, that's a DC generator. And it could also be operated as a DC motor with uh, a few tweakings of the commutator of this machine. However, when Dr. Pushel did the demonstration for this uh, DC motor, there was fucking sparks everywhere. It was probably, I don't know if it was embarrassing or not, but there was fucking sparks everywhere. It looked really, really rough. And Nikola Tesla, because of this, thought, he was like, yo, there's probably a way to make it not so sparky and all of this, right? So he raised his hand and he suggested, there's probably a way where we could eliminate so much of these appliances to this machine and not have so much sparks and not have it so messy. But the professor, Dr. Pushel, he responded back like, nope, that's impossible, that's impossible. And he went on later to make an entire lecture explaining why Nikola Tesla was freaking wrong. But do you think Nikola Tesla gave up? Do you think he gave up and said, oh yeah, it's impossible, so I'll never fucking try it? No. He didn't give up because 10 years later, Nikola Tesla invented that AC motor that he was once told was impossible to engineer into reality. So who's the Dr. Pushel in your life? If you have one in your life who's telling you that um, your goals and your milestones that you want to reach is impossible, tell them to shut the fuck up. They have no right to tell you what's possible and what's not possible. Okay, so what is your vision? Where are you going to direct these skills that you developed from your projects towards later in the future to find that right now. I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat it anymore. Now that you know where you want to go and how you want to get there, you got to do it the right way. 
Okay. And I'm talking about cheating. You know, all these other engineering students around you using ChatGPT or abusing ChatGPT, chat GPT, should I say, to finish all of their assignments and finish all of their online exams even. There's so many engineering students nowadays that don't have integrity, don't have any honesty, and then just cruise through university because they have all of these tools to do their assignments for them and to do their online exams for them. It's not okay. It's not okay in the modern day, especially, especially in the modern day, because there's so many problems in the future that engineers will have to solve. And if they take shortcuts and don't learn shit in university, then they're not going to be able to solve those unforeseen, scary and dangerous problems that we have yet to face. And not only that, but they're going to make the world fucking worse just by being a bad engineer. Because in all honesty, if you, if you think that this video wasn't serious enough, I'm going to talk about engineering disasters because there's been many incidents. Bridges collapsing that has killed dozens of lives. Buildings that have collapsed, killing hundreds of lives. And gas leaks that have killed thousands, fucking thousands of innocent lives. Yeah, isn't it fucking crazy to see what happens when engineers act without integrity, act unethically, act without honesty? It's fucking terrible. Not just terrible, but evil. Because those engineers who had those buildings collapse, who had those um, bridges collapse, their blood is by definition on their hands. It's terrible. A lot of my followers uh, watching my YouTube channel are from India. Shout out to you guys, but look around you guys. There's so much corruption, cheating engineering students, so much uh, fucking engineers who act without integrity, who cut maintenance for what? The sake of cost, the sake of money. So corrupt. This isn't just a message for my Indian engineering students out there, but for all engineering students out there around the world who's watching this video. Reject dishonesty and embrace integrity. We're gonna reach our goals the right way, aren't we? And with that being said, that's the five traits of a top 1% engineering student. First, gratitude. Simply the appreciation for this opportunity. Second, initiative. Building off of this opportunity that we have been given. Third, analytical thinking. We can't just make simple projects, but we also have to make projects that implement the theoretical knowledge even from our classes. Fourth, Vision. Where do you want to take these technical skills that you're learning from your projects towards in the future? What are your goals? Do you want to invent something? Do you want to land an internship? Land your dream career? Think fucking huge. Eliminate the word impossible from your vocabulary and eliminate the people that's telling you that it's not possible for you to reach such goals. Fifth, integrity. None of the four other traits of the top 1% engineer matters if you don't do it the right way. Because when you don't act with honesty, when you cheat on exams, when you cut maintenance costs on a project when you're an engineer, you know deep down that you're a fake. But if you've watched this far into the fucking video, then I know that you're a true engineer, a purposeful engineer who wants to change this world. And I'm on your side. I really am rooting for you because I want a world with real engineers who actually act with integrity, who have ambition and want to change the world and want to change the trajectory of humanity. Like, dude, you purposeful engineers who put effort, real effort into your designs and don't cut maintenance costs, keep the people on bridges, the tens of thousands of people who drive across bridges, you keep them safe by keeping your designs safe. Even the smallest of engineering work, like designing baby toys, Filleting the edges, something as, as simple as that is keeping a baby safe from uh, getting a scar on his head or something when he smacks the toy on his head or something, I don't know. But even the smallest of engineering work is purposeful. Everything that engineers do is purposeful. So direct it to whatever you desire. Click the top link in the description if you want to join my program with other like-minded engineering students like us who is watching this type of fucking content like you. You have the potential to collaborate with them if you want to want a project you have the potential to talk to me through our calls that we have every week in inside of that program and you have the opportunity to learn even more from me a fellow engineering student me myself if you don't know i'm a third year mechanical engineering student who's studying at an internship right now working in the engineering industry i have so much wisdom that that i want to provide to you i can't wait to see you inside man thank you for watching this video goodbye